Now, finally, ZTE has stepped up its game from the V40 series. Na nakita natin, puro Unisoc ang mga processor. This time around, gumamit na sila ng processor na from MediaTek. This is the Dimensity 810. So, gusto natin malaman ko this phone, kung kamusta ka na performance, is it worth it? Tara, simulan natin with a quick unboxing after this quick intro. So hi guys, I'm Parasir Chumano Gadget Psychic and welcome back to my channel. This is the ZTE Blade V41 Vita 5G. So kita natin ang box, no? It's very nostalgic if you recall the early days box of Vivo. It looks very much like the Vivo na early days na well, packaging. Lalo yung V dito na pagkakamalan mo baka siya Vivo. Now here are some basic specs na makita nyo and it is coming out with a 5G. So this one is a 6GB of RAM and 120GB of storage. It can expand up to 11GB of RAM. Sa gilid, this is what you see. And on the other side, same net. Buksan muna natin. So we have your traditional Katol na SIM ejector tool. Makapal lang ka ng user guide this time around. And of course, there's your warranty card. Meron din siyang free na screen guard. A clear na jelly case dito. So labas natin ang phone. Some quick specs. Check natin. Mm. The design looks quite similar pa rin kay V40, V40S. And, well, nothing really has changed that much. And, probably mas masasabi ko mas kamukha niya si V40 design. So, tingnan natin other things inside the box. 22.5 watts na fast charger. Meron siyang pa-headset. And a Type-C cable. Napag-usapan naman natin design nitong phone na ito. Sa likod, it has the triple camera setup. Starting with the 50MP na main camera sensor. Kita natin, there's a breaking line dito in between. And makita ng ZTE 5G ang nakaprint. Sa ilalim, nandiyan baka ng audio jack. Microphone in, Type-C port, of course, loudspeaker. On the other side, you have your fingerprint scanner, power button, and of course, your volume locker. They bob out your noise cancelling mic. And on the other side, you can see na nandiyan ang kanyang SIM tray. Now, gamitin natin ating katol pang eject. Kita natin, there's only two 5G na nano SIM that can be supported. Walang expansion. Pagdating naman sa design, this one has take a little bit step back over the V40S. Dahil bubalik siya sa teardrop notch, ang V40S is already a punch hole. Ang kanyang chin is a little bit thick and of course, ang kanyang side bezel is not that thin as well. Now, like I said, the phone nito is being powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 810. It's a 6 nanometer chip and itong score ang nakuha niya. 353,000 points dito sa Antutu Benchmark. And pag pinake na mo ang Antutu Benchmark, ang kanyang score, this is what you get. Now, pag chinake naman natin ang kanyang score dito sa Wildlife sa 3D Mark, it has a better, way better score compared sa Blade V40 and V40S. Now, for you guys na interested to know itong presyo na itong phone na ito, this one is currently priced at 11990 Pwede niyo mabili ito sa Shandy, Philippines, and also other legit online store that I'll be posting on the description box below. Itong phone na ito has a 4,500 mAh hours of battery which can charge as fast as 22.5 watts. But charging from 10 to 100 takes around mga 2 hours and 10 minutes to complete the full charging cycle. Now, Narate naman natin siya dito sa PC Mark na battery stress test. Nakakuha siya ng 11 hours and 22 minutes sa screen on time. Ang setting ko dito is 50% brightness and 60 hertz sa screen refresh rate. Now, using this phone on a day-to-day -day basis, I can say kaya naman na magtagal ng whole day as long as you're using it on a normal basis. Social media, taking some calls, live video chat, and of course, uh, using the camera and some light gaming. Now, ito phone na ito is running on my OS 12 inside Android version 12. And I can say smooth naman ang browsing dito sa phone na ito. One of my favorite things to do on a smartphone is definitely to browse on social media. Kita naman natin dito browsing on Facebook, TikTok, and some other social media apps like uh, Twitter and of course uh, Instagram. Smooth naman ang performance. Now, watching videos dito sa phone na ito is definitely okay. Even though na teardrop notch pa rin siya, I can say okay, this place is not really so bad. Watching my favorite Korean novella and some anime dito is definitely okay. Probably the only downside dito sa phone na ito is medyo mahina ang kind of loudspeaker and you have to use a headphones or your favorite TWS just to compensate for it. Now, playing the game Call of Duty Mobile dito sa phone na ito, I can say it's a huge step up over the V40 series. V40, V40S. Dahil this one is coming with a Dimensity 810. This one is a more uh, gamer na chip which can definitely perform. I can say na playing the Call of Duty Mobile is definitely a lot smoother compared 
sa V40 and V40s and this one was able to give me a better game experience and playing the game for an hour I can say okay naman siya wala naman masyado sa scene na lags or frame drops as long as okay ang internet connection and the uh, display is good and the controls is very responsive ang kanyang touchscreen na pag-usapan naman natin ang kanyang camera dito sa likod it has a 50MP na main camera sensor 2MP na macro lens and of course a 2MP na depth sensor Shooting at 1080p and 30fps, and of course, ang kind of front-facing camera is a 8MP na aperture 2.0 that can shoot up to 1080p and 30fps. Now, taking some photos outdoors, I can say that this one seems to take better shots as compared to V40 and V40s. Ang mga shots dito are better, mas sharper ang mga photos na nakuha ko dito, especially you know, outdoors. The focusing is a lot better. But taking some indoor low light shot, I can say that this one definitely was able to perform a lot better compared to the V40 series. Now using the front facing camera, taking some shots outdoors and indoors, I can say, well, it did perform a little bit better compared to the V40s series. And this one was able to take some nice shots and yeah, pretty decent naman kind of front facing camera. So here are some samples that I got using the front-facing camera for vlogging. So guys, this is a ZTE V41 and recording using the front-facing camera 1080p and I can say that the video is just very decent and this is what you get when you vlog outdoors or when you use it for video chatting or just simply video conferencing and the audio is using the default mic. So guys, this is how it looks like when you're vlogging indoors on low light using the ZTE V41 5G and recording at 1080p and 30fps is the resolution you'll be getting. If you're doing it for vlogging or just simply uh, video conferencing or just simply chatting on video for any type of messenger. So of course, the audio is recorded using the default mic. Comments? Hit it on the comment section below. And here are some samples that I used my rear camera for vlogging. Now guys, ano mas sabi ko dito sa ZTE Blade V41 Vita? Now, now pricing at 11,990 this phone definitely can perform. Now this phone can rival the mga likes ng Realme 9 and Narzo 50 which almost has the same performance with this phone. This one's a little bit cheaper compared to the other two that I just mentioned. But of course, you have other cheaper alternatives like the Infinix Hot 20 5G which priced at around 9,000 something. Well, you can also consider that phone as well. Overall, the phone is quite a performer, camera is better, and of course, battery life is not so bad. And definitely, what I like dito sa phone nito is ang kanyang form factor. And especially yung kanyang gold ring dito sa camera mojo. Now guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, hit nyo na rin bell icon para di nyo mamiss mga future uploads dito sa aking channel. And so, ako para sa Richmond, and you're watching Gadget Psychic. What's up? like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit that notification bell for one of my latest uploads click the dito and for one of my popular uploads click here